are now going to turn to M Health for Behaviour Change, which is territory that I personally feel a bit more comfortable with because it's it's the territory, it's the space really that BBC Media Action um, works in. And we're shifting from Africa over to Asia. First of all, we're going to India. And I'm delighted to introduce, first of all, Dr. Rashmi Rodriguez, who's a medical doctor and assistant professor at the Department of Community Health at St. John's Medical College in Bangalore, Karnataka. And Dr. Rodriguez is going to share the findings from a study around the use of mHealth for adherence to HIV medication. And I'm going to, we'll hear from both the speakers in succession, and then we'll take questions after that. A very good morning to all of you. I have some results from the HEAVEN study from India. So it is M Health for Antiretroviral Treatment Support evidence from India. This is six years of work that has been compressed into 10 minutes. And I do hope <laughs> that I do the study justice. But let's see. A little background into HIV infection in India. We have approximately 2 million HIV infected patients in the country a little less than 10% of the global HIV-infected population. Around less than 50% of these people actually receive treatment. The problem with HIV and treatment for HIV is that most patients need to take at least 95% of their prescribed medications in order to have better health outcomes and a longer life. And that is where we have adherence and the strategies to support adherence to medication that come into the picture. So adherence by itself is a very complex phenomenon, as you see. And forgetfulness is by far one of the most common barriers that we have seen to adherence to antiretroviral therapy and also adherence in many other diseases. There have been several strategies and interventions that have tried over the past several decades to improve and support adherence to medications. We have seen over time pill boxes, direct observed treatment, and even electronic reminders that came just before mobile phone reminders to support antiretroviral therapy. However, in the present scenario and situation, the ubiquity of mobile phones has provided us with a unique opportunity to harness this massive power of mobile phone communication to support adherence. And yes, India is a country with more mobile phone connections than the toilets. Yes, so we have about 900 million mobile phone subscriptions in the country. And with this scenario, we went to try to support um, adherence to antiretroviral therapy by developing a simple intervention. We tried to pilot it and then studied it in an RCT. We also tried to incorporate components of a qualitative study and to try to assess the costs with this intervention with the possibility of doing a cost-effectiveness analysis. Did we do the cost-effective analysis? That is a question that I will answer soon. Well, we have here, and I will present now, four studies that incorporate or um, that encompass the HIVIN trial. These four studies are within this conceptual framework. You can look at it as four components. We have first the mobile phone intervention itself. And if you look at the mobile phone intervention, we have 
the several components of the mobile phone intervention that we actually need to focus on. That is, the frequency. How often would patients actually like to receive this intervention? At what time would they like to receive it? What is the content of the intervention that they would like to receive? That is, would they like different kinds of reminders, different content, different texts? What exactly do they need? How much would they like to engage in that? Would they prefer an automated intervention? Would they like to talk to somebody? And then, could it be multi-component, or could it just be a single SMS, a single voice call? These are things that we need to look into when we try to develop an mHealth intervention. However, an mHealth intervention is received by a human being, an individual. And it is left to that individual entirely to accept and change behavior. And therefore, the several different components of that individual, the individual itself, the environment of the individual, and the health system all come into picture of whether this in intervention will be effective or not. So this intervention, if received by the individual who changes his behavior, that is better adherence, could result in better health outcomes. Yes, and all the four uh, sub-studies or the studies that went into the HEVEN trial could be placed in different parts of this conceptual framework. How did we develop the mobile phone intervention? First of all, we did a preliminary survey wherein most patients suggested to us that they would like voice calls. Few, of course, suggested that they may prefer a quiet little SMS. However, we had a large proportion of patients who were not literate. And therefore, we needed to try out an intervention that was simple, that could maybe have even a small component of an SMS and a voice call combined together. How often most of our patients suggested that they would like to receive this intervention about twice a week. So, we have an interactive voice call, which is automated and goes out to the patient with a mobile phone about once a week, and a pictorial SMS, which looked maybe, I mean, from in an Indian context, like a lamp. Some people might relate it to a pillbox, if that's what you think is best. And that too went out to the patient about once a week. So, the text, the voice, uh, I should say, just asked the patient if they had taken their medications um, in the past 24 hours. And the voice call went out, as I said, to the patient just about once a week. And if they did, they would press one on their mobile phones. And if they did not, they would have to press two. We did not aim to measure adherence remotely with this intervention. We just tried to use this as a reminder. And hence, we have not used um, the intervention as a measure of adherence in the study. The study was done in southern India. These are the four states with the highest burden of HIV infection in the country. We tried to use all aspects of the Indian healthcare system, that is private, public-private, and the public healthcare system. So we had Bangalore, the institution that I represent, St. John's Medical College, a private tertiary care teaching hospital on a public-private partnership with the government. We had a private research center and HIV care center at Chennai called the Vyaji Care Institute. And we had a completely government set up, that is the KR Hospital at Mysore. Coming to study one, this is of course uh, published in PLOS One, supporting adherence to antiretroviral therapy with mobile phone reminders in South India. Um, this, these, this study gives the results of the pilot cohort. Was the intervention useful? Well, we had about 150 patients who received the intervention for six months. However, we continued to measure adherence for another six months. Adherence was measured in the study using the pill count, and optimal adherence was defined as an adherence level of about greater than or equal to 95%. In order to be 
unbiased with the results as we had about a 9% dropout rate. We tried to do an analysis using a complete case analysis wherein all patients who completed the study only were considered for the analysis of adherence. We, did a, we used a best case scenario approach wherein all patients, irrespective of whether they dropped out of the study or not, were given good outcomes, that is good adherence, and we used a worst case scenario approach wherein patients who had dropped out of the study were given a poor adherence or a not optimal adherence outcome. What did the results show us? The complete case analysis and the best case scenario approach showed a significant change in adherence over time. And this is what led us into the trial. So the trial recently published in the BMJ was done with about 600 patients divided into two arms. They were ART naive. They had never received treatment before. They were followed up for a period of two years, unlike many studies with antiretroviral therapy and mobile phone adherence support that have been done for only a period of about one year. The outcomes studied were time to viral failure and adherence to treatment as measured by pill counts. All patients in the study were given mobile phones in order to encourage and have a good representation of all patients who attended our clinics, even those without, without mobile phones, because of this, because of the fact that we gave them mobile phones, we're now able to participate. The results, as we see from the survival curve, they are quite close together. There was no difference in the, the time to survival between the two arms of the study. And this was so at all the three sites. We had one site, that is the site at the public uh, healthcare center that had poorer adherence, even at baseline. Uh, relatively, uh, P patients with HIV infection have better adherence than people with other disease. And despite that, despite poorer adherence at one site, even patients at that site did not have better survival rates with the intervention. Adherence to antiretroviral therapy, again, we did not have a significant change in adherence in the RCT with antiretroviral therapy. So what went wrong? Did something really go wrong? Or did we not do it right? Where was the fault? In order to identify or maybe try to understand what happened to patients who were receiving this intervention, we tried to qualitatively study their experiences with the intervention. And this is what we found. We did 16 qualitative interviews, and we analyzed the interviews using a framework approach.